Okay, so in this hand history today, I am playing day 1A of a win, $600 buy-in, 200k guaranteed event. Uh, villain in today's hand is former world champion Joe McKeon. Um, I've played a decent amount with him over the years, and I feel as though I have a pretty decent idea as to how he approaches the game. My plan in this hand history is to play as theoretically well as I possibly can. That way he can't find some exploit that he has versus me or something like that. It is big blind 800. I have 25k stack with ace of spades, jack of hearts in mid position one, eight handed. I raise to 1600. Joe McKean calls a cutoff and the small blind calls. Okay, so raise first in. I have 30 big blinds ish from MP1. This is going to be my raising range, about 20% of hands. My assumption is, is that he's probably going to assume I am somewhere around here. So our table is really soft besides for um, the two of us as well as Ryan Lang. Um, it's pretty much all recreational players and us. So because of that, maybe he thinks I'm going to be opening a little bit looser, but I would assume that he expects me to be in ballpark with theory. Versus my raising range, I also expect him to be somewhat in line with theory. So cut off versus mid position one. He's supposed to be calling 9.65% of hands and three betting 5.72% of hands. Looks like a lot of hands are mixes between calls and three bets, except for mid pairs on down some of his high suited broadways. Um, everything else kind of mixes a little bit uh, for the most part. Um, while Joe is a very, very good poker player and plays fairly theory oriented, um, I've noticed that like he tends to be a little bit edge passy in some spots and he is just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly difficult to play versus post flop. Um, not necessarily because he has strong ranges, although he does, but just because of how well he understands and plays the game. Um, so while GTO is here, I'm going to expect him to be a little bit tighter, but not by much. And like maybe like, for example, this Jack nine suited, yeah, he's probably folding it. This nine eight suited, maybe it goes either way. Um, so that's just kind of what I expect. So maybe he's playing 15% of hands, 14 and a half, probably somewhere around there. Okay, so the small blind calls obviously impacts things uh, post flop. However, that being said, how we want to play versus Joe here, we're going to get a very good idea as to what as to what we should do three-handed based off of what heads up we should be doing, and then we can use that to modify our ranges here. So, looking at this spot, uh, I opened mid position one. He called the cutoff, and we are thirty big blinds deep effective. So cutoff versus mid position, thirty big blinds single raise pot. And the flop is jack 10 7 with the jack 10 of clubs and the 7 of hearts. So on RTP, uh, it's going to show spades. In actuality, uh, the flop was jack 10 of clubs with the 7 of hearts. So when I open to 1600, Joe calls the cutoff, small blind calls, blinds fold. We're looking at a pot size of 6,400 and the flop of jack 10 7 uh, two tongue i knew in game that when this flop came out that these out of position spots are just very very high frequency checks um and if we look at ace jack here in particular i'm supposed to check uh let's see i'm supposed to check 60 percent of the time with my ace jack and with my exact combo i had the jack of hearts in my hand for the backdoor blocker of hearts only. Um, I do not block uh, the flop flush draw at all. So with my ace jack here, not blocking the flop flush draw, looks like I do get to bet it a little more frequently than if I do block the flop flush draw, which makes sense. You know, the, having the flop, uh, having the backdoor flop flush draw here with the, in this case, having the ace of spades, but just having that backdoor nut draw, um, especially backdoor royal draw in particular, your hand is pretty protected. Uh, yeah, kings still suck, queens still suck, nine still suck, eight still suck, but if a spade or if the flush card comes, you're going to be in pretty good shape. And 
in this spot as well, when you do check, the nice thing is, is when the cutoff bets, it reopens the action and you can now just play a really big pot with this very strong top, uh, top pair that is still somewhat vulnerable. So you're pushing great equity, but vulnerable equity. So if we do check raise and get a fold, that just ends up being great for us. Um, so I knew that this bot was a very high frequency check and I was pretty sure with my exact combo that it'd probably be a good check or I, I knew I could go two thirds pot too, but I thought it'd be a better check. Now the small blind having called preflop changes things a bit. I think it strengthens his betting range a little bit, but I don't think it strengthens it by a lot. Now let's say the small blind was a very, very good reg then I would be way more inclined to bet this to make sure that my hand gets the protection that it needs. Um, and I would also expect him to be way more likely to check back. But since the small blind is a very fun player, I don't think it's going to really change his approach to this bot. So I'm not going to change mine. So I check and he ends up checking back. He checked back somewhat quickly. Um, he was definitely confident and he had a check back it seemed, but the thing is, is when I'm playing with players of this caliber, I don't really look for reads. Even if I do think I might have one, I'm only going to trust it in very, very, very close situations. So if I'm on the fence on something and I can make a decision that kind of goes either way, then I might go, do I think I might have maybe saw something? Uh, so I check and he checks back. Turn is a deuce of hearts adding backdoor flush draw. Um, I do have the jack of hearts in my hand blocking this backdoor flush draw. Small blind checks. Now when the small blind checks to me on this turn heart, I knew that that I kind of had all options on the table and it looks like I have actually all options. I can check, I can with my exact hand I can check as you can see here. I can go a uh, quarter pot, I can go two thirds pot, or I can pot. So in game, I went two thirds pot and I th actually think that that's a mistake. Um, I know theory allows me to go two thirds pot and actually prefers me to go to two thirds pot. It's the highest frequency bet that I make. But the issue is, is that I, I unblock flop flush draws and I only block turn flush draws with the jack of hearts in my hand. So my hand is fairly vulnerable yet and if I bet two-thirds pot or pot I think Joe has very similar decisions with the entirety of his range and I don't think that he's going to read a pot size bet as being something that is weird here so it kind of fits with a lot of bluffs I'm going to want to to use large bets for and it obviously makes a lot of sense when I have a hand like this also the small blind being this fun of a player, although checking twice and just telling us he has a weak hand, if he does have a hand that wants to call a bet, I don't think his range is going to change based off my bet sizing. So while in game I went two thirds pot uh, and I bet uh, 4K into a pot size of 6,400, I think that's a mistake and I should instead just be potting this and going full 6,400. So I bet 4K into pot size of 6,400 and Joe calls and the small blind folds. And the river is one of the worst cards in the deck. It is the queen of hearts. I think the only worst cards are the eight of hearts and the nine of hearts and the eight of spades and the nine of spades. I think those cards are worse. Every other card is uh, significantly better. I bet you thought you were gonna save me in this video, didn't you? Not so fast. Uh, just wanted to get a click Editorial reminder, obviously, Ryan said uh, those would be spades. What he actually meant was in-game at the table would have been clubs. Uh, so just wanted to give a quick reminder about that. Otherwise, this has been a damn good video so far, if I do say so myself. On this River Queen of Hearts, I just checked, but... I was actually kind of curious as to whether or not I could use like a 10% blocker bet, which it looks like I can block with my exact combo too. Look at the, yeah, see in game having, uh, I did consider block betting, but 
I wasn't certain as to whether or not I could. The queen is just such a good card for a lot of hands that he's checking back flop and calling turn on. I just didn't think it was really that worth it. But if we look at it, look at my exact combo. Uh, an ace that unblocks both draws with the jack of hearts blocking this backdoor flush. And in both cases, my hand is pure betting, largely going 10% pot. So why is it betting and why is it specifically choosing 10% pot? I think that these are really, really, really good uh, questions to ask. And I'm going to try my best to figure out exactly why. Out of position on the river, you get to have block bet options. Um, in position on the river, it's almost always going half pot or larger. There are some exceptions, but it's like, maybe 80% plus of situations, you just don't get a small bet size in position on the river. Um, while out of position on the river, there are many, many, many spots where not only can you go 25% pot, but you also get to go 10% pot. And the funny thing is, is that like back in the day, a block bet was just like seen as this like, at first it was seen as being somewhat normal, and then it was seen as being kind of ridiculous, and now it's fully back to being just full theory approved. So those people that came up with block betting back in the day, you know, yeah, that's really sick. Congratulations, champs. Anyways, for this spot, yeah, I really think I should have block bet. The types of situations that I think are ideal block bets are spots in which when you face a bet, you have really, really, really bad decisions. However, when you block bet yourself you can get called by a lot of worse hands what worse hands can i get called by well i could get called by ace 10 i get called by king 10 i could get called by king jack 10 9 10 8 pocket nines pocket eights maybe even a hand like say a seven of spades or a seven of the flopped flush draw so there definitely are plenty of hands that i can get called by that are worse and let's see what happens when I check my hand if he were to make a large bet. So I check. He ends up checking back. I win with ace jack. But I'm just curious as to what happens when he goes all in and my exact combo. My exact combo. Oh, it does call. Um, so it looks like if I go 10% pot with my exact combo, jack of hearts uh, blocking the river flush, we can't really call. So I guess we get to block bet it because the bet itself just makes money. And then in the few rare situations in which we don't block bet it, we get to use it as a bluff catch. So I guess it just is one of those hands that works well both ways because it has enough equity, which I guess makes sense. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this hand history. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe and healthy out there and best of luck at the tables. I always want to say see it, but whatever. Best of luck at the tables.